Hi there. Today I'd like to talk about collaboration using AutoCAD. Uh, and this is a feature of AutoCAD that's been around really since the beginning. Um, and what it allows you to do is insert projects or drawings that other people are working on into your drawing. Um, and then as they work on their drawing and make changes, uh, you can update the view of it that's in your model. Um, so when they add things or delete things, it will change inside your drawing. Uh, and what that allows you to do when you work on a sheet of drawings, um, many people can work on that sheet of drawings at the same time. So uh, a few things to figure out uh, that you have to organize in your model. Um, uh, first of all, uh, when you have a bunch of objects in your drawing, like right now this is just an interior elevation with a lot of lines, um, there's a number of ways that you can organize it. Um, I, I drew this little vase here, and I could um, create what's called a group out of that vase. I'll just type in the word group and select the objects here and hit enter. And uh, what a group is, is um, uh, whoops. Um, yeah, go away. Um, is a collection of objects that um, uh, just kind of make it convenient to move them around. You see how when I click on this object, I have just one grip, and I can I can copy it, and uh, you know it's very handy um, uh, to move around multiple objects. There's some lines and some some splines here, um, and I can uh, modify this object like other objects, sort of more or less. So I could stretch it, or I could even kind of warp it a little bit if I wanted to. Okay, um, lovely. And you see how one changes and the other doesn't change. Now groups are great, but um, they do not help us uh, when we want to collaborate. Groups are handy for moving around lots of uh, collections of objects um, within a single drawing, but um, we need to uh, have something that we can export to other drawings. So I'm going to ungroup this uh, drawing here. And uh, the nice thing about groups is that they retain the original layer designation um, uh, that you assign to those lines. So you can have lines with multiple uh, layer uh, types on them. If you're going to uh, use something where uh, uh, each object is a repeated instance of the same object, uh, that's something called a block. And in a block, it does not retain the layer designation inside of um, inside of the block. So what you do, the, the kind of general format for blocks is to create um, objects and put them all on layer zero. See here I have the properties uh, called layer zero. And uh, now to um, create a block, it's pretty simple, you just type in the word block, okay. And I could have left those objects selected, but I wanted to show you on the command here. Um, first of all, you can give the block a name, Boz, for example. And um, the base point, that's where you're going to grab the block. So I'm going to pick a point. And you can pick any point you want. So I could say, always place this vase, I don't know, a foot off the wall, or I could grab it by the bottom center. So I'm going to do that. And of course, you can select whatever objects you want. And again, I'm going to go here and select the object. And you can just hit enter or right click to go back to the menu. Uh, typically, you convert these objects to a block. Um, there's occasions where you want to retain the original objects, um, but then you have to insert the block um, all new. And click OK. And you might say, well, that all it did is it changed the color. Well, what happens with a block, when all the objects inside the block are on layer 0, what will happen is all those objects will now take the property of whatever layer you happen to put it on. In this case, I believe I put it on interior elevation medium. Okay, And uh, now what you'll see is we are unable to edit this block. No matter what we do, nothing happens. Um, in order to edit it, you need to double click on it, or you could right click on it and choose block editor. Okay, and some blocks have additional features, and when you double click on them, strange menus will pop up. But for now, let's just choose the block editor. And what you'll see, it's kind of a gray background here, and here are all the objects that I drew. And uh, this is a special interface just for editing blocks. And now I can modify any objects that I want. 
Okay, see how I stretch that out. And just close block editor, and we'll ask if I want to change, uh, save the changes, and of course I do. And now you see how all the objects change. So blocks versus groups, it's kind of an important distinction. Blocks, every instance will change. Groups, only the instance you edit will change. So there you go. That still doesn't help us collaborate, though, but it does help us uh, when we are organizing our model. And any time you have repeated objects, uh, and this is things like furniture or door frames or even um, structural beams, you'll want to use either a group or a block. And remember, groups will retain the original layer designation um, of the objects you uh, have grouped together. With blocks, you'll want to put everything on layer zero. Now, to collaborate with other people, I can do what's called a write block, and the command is W-B-L-O-C-K. And uh, just like um, the uh, block that we created earlier, we can um, pick a base point. I usually pick a base point on the bottom left of the elevation. It's just my kind of standard. Uh, I select objects, and uh, like the... Uh, previous example where we made a block, a right block, you select the object. So, I mean, you don't have to put them all on layer zero. They can stay on whatever layers they were on. Hit enter to go back to the menu. And of course, you'll need to figure out where the object is going to go. Uh, on the PC, uh, this is the menu that comes up and I can put it on the desktop of the PC and call it, oh, I don't know, uh, elevation, call it interior elevation. Uh, of the fireplace, which is what this is. Okay. Um, now, when you're uh, in this menu, uh, by the way, be aware that um, depending on who you're working with, if you're collaborating with, say, an engineer who's not in your office, they may have an older version of AutoCAD. There's a lot of versions of AutoCAD. You can see how far back it goes, even before uh, the year 2000. Um, so what I would recommend, just for uh, safety's sake and to be sure, certain, uh, save it as a version 2010. This retains um, almost all of the uh, original functionality um, of the drawing, um, but uh, it, it makes it so that you have a higher likelihood of, of um, the uh, person you're sending this to being able to open your drawing. So again, version 2010. And here... Uh, on the PC side, it does say star.dwg. DWG is the file extension that stands for uh, drawing, DWG. Um, there is another one down here. You'll notice a very similar sort of thing, DXF, drawing exchange format. Um, you can use that if you are, say, working with an engineer or a lighting designer who has a different CAD software. So anyway, I'll choose this one here and click Save. Um, and uh, finally, when you um, are done with all these uh, objects, just click OK, and it will save the drawing onto your desktop. Okay. Now, you might say, big whoop, why is that so exciting? Let me slide this over here, and uh, just to uh, make it um, uh, apparent what we're doing, um, just close this menu here. Um, here's my elevation, and uh, here is my... Um, uh, set of uh, drawings that I'm doing for this project. And what I want to do is put this drawing in here in such a manner that it updates when this drawing is changed. And the uh, way that you do that is something called external references. So here in my uh, main drawing, I'm going to insert this new uh, external reference um, into my drawing. Uh, I'll just type in xref, and uh, that brings up what's called the reference manager. And you often have quite a few uh, drawings uh, that you've referenced. And this is great. You may be collaborating with six or seven other people. Um, and very commonly, you'll see something like a structural grid from a structural engineer, um, a mechanical uh, plan for uh, uh, mechanical items, uh, HVAC, that you might receive from a, a, a mechanical engineer, etc., etc. Anyway, I'm just going to click the little plus sign here um, to bring up a menu that will allow me to browse and find my model. And here's my interior elevation of a fireplace. And I've, I've actually saved this uh, somewhere that I can um, share on the PC and Mac side. 
I'll click open. Uh, like other objects, and um, when we uh, add blocks, um, you can allow it to become uh, an attachment. There's other options for the way it can go in, including the scale, um, the rotation, um, all sorts of things. Generally what you do, you don't mess with the scale, but you do mess with where it's inserted. Okay, And when we created this uh, block, we uh, defined an insertion point of the lower left, um, so hopefully that's where it will appear. Apparently not. Um, and so here is my object. And when you click on it, what you'll see is it's one big object. It's kind of like a block, um, except that um, to edit it, uh, you, well, basically, just don't edit an external reference. It's it's a, a rule that um, you shouldn't you shouldn't mess with it. Anyway, in my uh, ex, in my reference manager, you can see here it's listed here under external references. So in our project, um, and most projects actually, when you're collaborating, you're going to have a list of say several interior elevations that different people have drawn. Um, you also might have, like I mentioned, structural plans and other things. If you need more information, or if you're like me and you've forgotten where you've saved it, you can expand this menu, and uh, it will tell you exactly where it was found on your computer um, or on the network. Okay, So uh, you might say, well, that's just Jim Dandy. Why is that so exciting? Um, well, let me come over here to this uh, original drawing here. Um, uh, this is the, the uh, source for this XREF here on the left. Um, and let me make a change. I'm going to insert uh, another block. And again, just type in the word insert, like we learned earlier. If there are blocks loaded into your drawing, they will occur here. Now here's the one I've created, but there's a bunch of other ones uh, here. Let's see, there's some people. Let's choose a guy, a scale figure. Again, don't mess with the scale probably a good idea not to mess with the rotation either, um, but it's perfectly fine to specify the insertion point. Click OK. And probably this insertion point is down at the bottom of the feet, so I'm going to go um, for a uh, O-snap that puts it right on the floor, maybe in the middle of the door. There we go. So you can see here I've added the guy in, this little scale figure. I'm going to choose Save As and as a drawing, and uh, just to make sure that I've uh, got my 2010 setting here, um, I could just do save, but I like to do this just to make sure I've remembered to do it, um, remember to save it as an older file version. And I'll click save, and it will say, oh, do you want to replace that? And of course, yes, I do. Uh, and what you'll see on the left here, an external reference file has changed. It's warning me, hey, hey, somebody's made a change to a part of your drawing. Um, and that's this one here, this uh, uh, interior elevation of the fireplace. All I have to do is select it in the reference manager and choose reload. What you should see, hopefully, is that the guy will show up. And this is really great um, when you're working with other people. These references are so easy to um, update uh, in your drawing. Um, you might say, well, you know, what if I want to just edit this file um, in my project? What I would strongly recommend is that you break the link between this file and this file if you plan to edit it. And that's what we're going to do. Um, here, uh, you just, like we did before, right click on it. And there's a number of options in here, uh, which I'm not going to talk about, um, except um, this one here, bind insert. And uh, what that does is it allows you to um, basically make this file a, a block within your project. So I'll just click Bind Insert. And now you might say, well, it looks kind of the same, except there's no references listed in my reference manager. And I can just explode this guy. Um, oops, except I have to probably type in Explode, select it. And like magic, now I have all these objects that I can edit. Um, again, I, I cannot uh, emphasize enough, when you're collaborating with other people, um, you need to either communicate to this person that it's time to make a change, or do this bind insert, and that way it becomes um, part of your project. Uh, so uh, 
in this case, I now have two elevations in my model space area. What I like to do is move all of my elevations, and these are happen to be interior. This one happens to be interior elevation. I'm going to put it over here, and I'm going to put my exterior elevation in a slightly different part of model space. It can be totally messy in model space. Model space usually is just reserved for where you do your drawing. Um, paper space, which is the other, these other tabs here, that's where we'll be doing our um, page layout. So to uh, review, you can use uh, different uh, object types to organize your model. You can have groups, which are groups of objects that are, each group is unique, but it's just kind of for convenience. You can use a block, which is a repeated instance of uh, an object. And then you can use a write block, where it actually saves whatever objects you've selected out as an entirely separate file. And that file is one which you can share with other people using the xref uh, command.